Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts Movie Podcast with Keith and Jordan. Yes, we're Jordan and Keith. Hey, hey, sir, who are you? Who, me? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that guy with the third microphone and headset on. <laughs> who was that dude? Well, that could be anybody. I... <laughs> Hi, guys. My name is Mariano. I'm excited to be here. Mariano, um, well, this is just kind of an impulse thought, but would you like to be the third host on this movie's podcast? I have to think. Yeah, okay. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> well, everybody, welcome to newcomer and great friend Mariano. Hey, welcome, Mariano. Thank you. Thank you. God. Right on. Right on. So, Jordan, what's uh, what's our feature movies for today, dude? That, that happens so organically. Um, well, <laughs> right. <laughs> our first uh, featured movies are going to be The Nice Guys and, of course, the big one, X-Men Apocalypse. Right on. Right, right on. on. Right on. I'm excited. Those are two good movies. I, I, I agree. So let's – we should probably start with uh, X-Men Apocalypse. I think so. Let's do that. So I think that's what the fans are waiting for. That's what so. I'm <laughs> waiting for as a fan, yeah. <laughs> All right. So X-Men Apocalypse is directed by Brian Singer. He's also the guy who directed the first X-Men movie. He did X-Men First Class and Future Days Past. So where do we start this movie? Wow. X-Men Apocalypse, basically the story picks up where Days of Future Past left off at. So the X-Men are picking up the pieces. You know, Mystique revealed who she was to the whole world. So now the whole world is aware of mutants. So she basically stopped Magneto from, you know, kicking butt at the White House. And when, you, when the movie starts, so basically this film is about uh, this original mutant and how do you say his name mario you know his name or apocalypse <laughs> oh well there <laughs> yeah i feel a little stupid now but yeah that's okay he, well <laughs> he huh? spell apocalypse <laughs> this isn't the spelling bee dude all right all right just <laughs> you know one thing that i found really interesting about apocalypse and one thing that really interests me about a lot of movies is when they get the mysticism just right okay the idea of like an ancient egyptian original you know almost uh, god type of of all powerful being is always so interesting if they do it just right right you know what i mean and, yeah i do yeah and that really i think added a lot to the story so can you tell us uh and and, and the fans what did the, they get right well can we so can you tell us well we need to get into the premise of the film so you know what the film is about and you know what, what you can see from the trailer at least okay yeah. well what i saw from the trailer was and what i heard from the trailer because you hear jennifer lawrence talking is that Apocalypse is the original mutant, almost like Dracula in Blade Trinity. And he is nice. he's much more powerful, much more capable. But what makes him deadly is his knowledge base is insane. And he knows how to, how to kind of pull the extra energy out of the other mutants like he did with uh, Olivia Munn was in the trailer. And she had that big, you know, sword coming out of right. her arm. Right. And they all had to band together in order to stop him. Because he wanted to destroy the planet and then reshape it in his image. Well, so, yeah, and, and that's definitely in the trailer as well. So, yeah, you're right. And I believe Apocalypse is also like a few thousand years old. Yes. So, you know, and when you watch the trailer, they talk, they talk about, well, he always comes with four people, like the four horsemen. Exactly. And they're like, oh, like in the Bible? And they're like, well, it could have been based off of him. Exactly. <laughs> And that's where it gets interesting. Yes, I, I agree. And Apocalypse is played by Oscar Isaac, who's a great actor who also did um, A Most Violent Year about a year or two ago, which is a great film. Okay. So he's a really good actor. Yeah, this film was very interesting. It's It, it had some great twists and turns. And what I yeah. like about the theme with X-Men Apocalypse is that it, it it's the sequel that was – part of a prequel that's like the whole new mm -hmm. thing now going on mm -hmm. and i'm digging it because it was never really done before until a few years ago until quentin tarantino did it with his movies in it you know the what story I, is all flipped over yeah yeah you, one thing that i really liked about it that I, I don't know if you guys have pointed out yet is that um jordan speaking um that what i really liked was the whole movie it felt kind of more lighthearted. if you go back and you look at the original x-men movie and you kind of look at you know just superhero movies before then not counting you know the wacky like batman before uh -huh. the yesteryear but it kind of had that deadpool feel to it it had it where they they not only and not just deadpool but also marvel movies where they're balancing that very very action-packed scene with a lot of charm with a lot of wit with a lot of humor there were there were some scenes where I think the entire audience got a nice chuckle out of the movie. 
Yes, they did. I wouldn't compare it to Deadpool because Deadpool was very dark with very dark humor. <laughs> no, no, and, adult, and I wouldn't. I wouldn't humor. necessarily say Deadpool, <laughs> but I'd say I, it's definitely unlike a lot of the last X Men movie, where it's not just so intense biblical like violence. At this point, it, it kind of you know addressed that this is a superhero movie at its core. And exactly. it still has room to be as fun as it can be exciting. Right. Allow me to bridge, bridge excuse me, this gap here. Okay. What he's saying is not so much lighthearted, but it's almost that, that stigma where if, if you're drinking, you know, sweet wine, you like something bitter to go with it because it keeps the wine sweet. And the bits of humor that were in the movie were just enough to keep the action from getting boring. Like Transformers sometimes got a little boring to me. You know, it's like okay. 20 minutes exactly, of Autobot yeah. fights. Okay. But it didn't feel like it, it took itself too seriously. Right. It broke up very, very well. Yeah. All right. Okay. I can dig that. Right on. Could you yeah. agree with that? Like, well, I mean, you saw it? Yeah, it was very charming. Quicksilver was funny. There were things about it that I liked. So, you know, it, it, it was Professor X or Professor Xavier, um, you know, running into an old flame who didn't remember him. And him stumbling over words when he sees her again. You can tell he's clearly smitten with her. So that was nice to see. I mean, all those different things added up to, to, for a great film. This is actually my favorite X-Men movie. I mean, I, I, mine I, too. I, I think yeah. I have to agree to that too, actually. Well, I mean, other than the famous X-Men uh, Origins Wolverine, I mean, who, which everyone was really loved. But <laughs> this is, I'm sorry, that was a joke. Was, I know. But, I like that one, actually. Yeah. I, I like it too. All right. Yeah, see? honestly, I liked it too. Okay, so really that wasn't a joke. We all loved it. So never mind. <laughs> Take back what I previously just said. The but, Oh, I, I was just about to say what I really liked about the scene you were just talking about was I loved Professor Xavier in it. I loved yes. it for the first time. And no offense like to Patrick Stewart. Boy. I think we can all agree <laughs> Patrick Stewart's a fantastic actor. But what was really refreshing was even Xavier, it seemed like he had more human to him. He wasn't so serious. He wasn't so brass tacks. And he wasn't the guy who knew everything. Not the know-it-all, but the guy who knew everything in the movie. This one, it kind of showed him with the kind of boyish charm. It kind of showed him, uh, I don't know, like he could have invented a Facebook if he wasn't an X-Men. He just seemed like very kind of charming. Well, what, what, what I'll say about the X-Men movies too, especially this one, is that, I mean, there were so many, di there were so many different spots of symbolism that you can take from. Yeah. Like when Mystique, is, when she appears, a.k.a. Raven, Jennifer Lawrence, char her character, she did a great job. Everyone did a great job in this film. And she's helping new mutants, you know, uh, uh, become okay. And, and, and she's making sure that they're safe. It was kind of like an underground railroad thing. And yeah. that could be reminiscent to like the Civil War and slavery. So there's just so much symbolism. When you look at Magneto and you look at Professor X, Magneto is like Malcolm X. And Professor Xavier is like Martin Luther King. You know, and they're friends. And they're both so relevant. And they're both even more powerful when they're together. And when you when we first see Magneto in the movie, in this movie, Michael Fassbender playing him now. God, and Michael Fassbender. And when you see where he's at in his life and how his life changes, because I'm not going to give any of that away, it was so moving. It right. was so moving. It was directed so well. I totally and, agree. Uh -huh. And I think, I think the best way that I could phrase what you're describing right now is – to not get too obscure, it's my thing about art is what makes it beautiful is the pain. When you find something in a way that you didn't expect it to be there, it's more precious then. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. you're right. Like, do you, you know, would yeah, you consider it more impressive to be? Love you, you on know, the show is it's got very <laughs> philosophical <laughs> fast. Yeah, well, but I'm getting to a point that that will tie back. I promise. <laughs> if you were to meet, you know, let's say a fellow podcaster and he was very like articulate you'd think okay well that's that's kind of a, that's expected now if we were to go meet like an olympic athlete and he was just as eloquent you'd be blown away because you don't expect it it's that beauty in that dark place that you don't expect and that kind of brings humility i think the yes. symbolism you're talking about is different pieces of almost embarrassment or humiliation that we all feel in one degree or another we all know what it's like to have a friend so have that love but still have reason to kind of feel that distance or that that pressure between you. We all know what it's like to either be carried like Jennifer Lawrence did with the mutants and feel kind of weak and feel the need to latch onto someone or feel the need to be that latch for someone. And it, those emotions to me are always what make movies so moving. And this movie had a lot of it.
and it was great. I, I, I agree, and it was humbling for everybody. Exactly. Uh, for Magneto, for Professor Xavier, because Professor Xavier, of course, we all love him, yeah. and you know, he's always the yin to Magneto's yang. I love Magneto, yang. too, though. I've always oh, yeah, loved Magneto's character. definitely. <laughs> but I was going to say real quick, well, you know, I can get back to this in a minute. So. Yeah, and we'll, we're, we're still going to have our wrap-up. And I, I just wanted to say as a closing, I also agree. I loved Magneto. I love how he just didn't feel like a very villainous character. Mm -hmm. He had more depth to him, and yeah, I think yes. that was something. And he I'm always more. has. Yeah, exactly. Kind of that, that. I've always liked him. I've always felt yes. like a, a soft spot for him because yes. he was always almost a victim. Yes. You know? Yes. So uh, we're going to have to get it to commercial. I think our, our review on this movie is we have a very soft spot for Magneto, and that's a good thing. So when we come back, we're going to be going ahead and talking about the nice guys. The nice we'll, guys. And we'll wrap up uh, X-Men as well. Sounds good. Talk okay. to you guys soon. Okay. See you. See you out there in space. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Hey everybody! Welcome back to that from that fantastic commercial. I had a good time listening to it. <laughs> yes. Key thoughts. Oh, it was a beautiful commercial. Mariano, that could have been the greatest commercial since the Super Bowl ever. All right. So consistency, we love it. All right. So now that we're back, we're going to go ahead and jump right into the nice guys. Yes, the nice guys. Excellent film starring Russell Crowe, mm -hmm. Ryan Gosling. And it's directed by Shane Black, who... Iron Man 3. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yes, Iron Man 3. He also did Lethal Weapon 1 and 2. He did The Last Boy Scout, Long Kiss Goodnight, The Monster Squad. Yeah, so he's been around. Can I say, just off the jump, when I saw the billboard for The Nice Guys, uh -huh. I was so excited to see Russell Crowe in a movie because it had been a while for me, anyway. I guess it has been a while. Right. Except for, right. You know, like a man of steel, but yeah. But yeah. Okay. And maybe but, something after that. Right. I, I don't know, but yeah. But... When you see him in a poster, and it, last time was like, what, Gladiator? It was almost that second of like, yes! Yeah, Russell. That's how it was for my, me when I saw Michael Keaton in Birdman. I just started shouting, Keaton's back, you know? So I, I know that feeling. That's good when an actor you're looking, looking forward to. You could even be biased, you could say, because you were so excited for Russell Crowe, right? I mean, which mm -hmm. I understand. <laughs> I mean, I'd like to think not, but I guess probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, that's understandable. So, fellas, talk to me. So, Jordan, Mariana, so talk to me about The Nice Guys. What, what's, what's going on with that movie? What, what's, what's it about? What's the premise? The premise is it's based in 1970s Los Angeles, okay. which is a funny time, you know, with the, the different uh, – the funny, the way that they dress, the hairstyles, the mustaches. <laughs> yeah, it's a great, it's a great place to put a detective in. Exactly, especially for a, a funny movie. Yeah. Now, it's Ryan Gosling, who's this private eye, but he's a little, a little off his game, a little, you know, <laughs> bumbling kind of bumbling. That was bumbling. The yeah, yeah. And then there was Russell Crowe. He's you know he's the hired muscle, and they're looking for someone that that had you know turned up missing, and so they kind of fell into this weird. Like, I help you, you help me dynamic. And it was, you know, it seems like a lot of fun. So, yeah, yeah you're right. So it's like they don't start off being friends or buddies. And right. how they meet is kind of <laughs> humorous and violent. <laughs> Which whenever, you know, we say this, I mean, keep in mind, it sounds like a generic cop story that we're, that we're describing. But it's, it's definitely not. It doesn't feel like... It doesn't feel like, oh, he's got to partner up with a monkey now or, you know, him and the dog. It's, <laughs> not at all. It, it, it does have an original feel to it despite it sounding like a cliche. We're not doing that justice. It was 
I, I definitely didn't feel like, oh, not this again at any point in the movie. It felt very refreshing. I think Russell Crowe and Ryan Gosling help keep it refreshing. But all above, even if there were two different actors there, God forbid that, it would still be just a very nice, well-written, made movie. So, I totally agree, but that did speak to me a lot about Russell Crowe and Ryan Gosling really have this ability to carry a movie. No, they do, and their chemistry was dynamite. Right. It really was. Because like, I wasn't expecting that casting at all. You know what I mean? Me I never would have said, put those two in a movie. Exactly. Me neither. No. But that's and why it worked. That's why it was so exciting to me when I saw it. Yeah, I agree. No, yeah, it didn't seem as obvious as like John C. Riley and uh, Will Ferrell. But um, you're it's, right. It's it right. still, it, it worked really well. They helped make the movie, but if they weren't in it, my, my thing is, I don't think that it would have been, you know, it would have been a terrible movie regardless. Agreed. But they, they did. Their, their charm and their, you know. Well, I, I mean, you're, you're right. When a script is written well, it shouldn't matter what actors are in the movie, but because of those two guys, I don't know if that would have worked with anybody else. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because they they were so good together, and it was they such did a play great off contrast. each other well. It, yeah, you know, and then like Ryan Gosling's daughter in the movie, she she steals the show. I mean, she's she's great. I mean, it's. But I, I want to say, don't see this on the account that Ryan Gosling and Russell Crowe are in it, because even I, I want to say, if you hate Russell Crowe, if you hate Ryan Gosling, once again, God forbid. But if for one of either one of those people, this movie I think could even kind of change your opinion of the two, because it is a strong enough movie, and it's a, it's a really strong performance by both of them. But why would you hate Ryan Gosling? I know, check I don't, yourself into a mental hospital. I don't know. I don't. I, you know, yeah, I mean the one. You know he's he's a heartthrob, and I'm not even hating on it. You know he's you know because he's he's also a really good actor. I mean he he does some dark and good stuff, so he's not just maybe a if face. someone who's like <laughs> dated Ryan Gosling in the past, and it was like a rocky relationship, and she has some <laughs> bad blood going on. Sweet, man, leave Ryan alone, man. Leave, leave alone. I just I'd, I'd ask her to go see the yeah, nice right guys. What I mean, this he, isn't about me and Ryan Gosling. Taking your phone calls? I mean, what's going on? <laughs> You're very pretty. He, he's he's crazy. Just cut it out. It's, it's not a big deal. I, I'm fine. You're over it. Yeah, the breakup. It's, it's okay. whatever. He's a great actor. It's it's a good movie, guys. Come on. Yeah, but yeah, I, I enjoyed it. It was a nice twists and turns. Uh, there was lots of surprises in it. There's some good campy humor in it that goes with the film, and you know, there's some there's some stuff in the film too that was kind of like disturbing. <laughs> Disturbing, and there was some stuff that was disturbingly innocent at the same time. If that makes any sense, what I'm saying that makes total sense. I, I, I think, think so. Yeah, <laughs> I think th that that added to the point that I was talking about earlier. The fact that there's something disturbing and something so innocent makes the disturbing more disturbing, and that creates yeah. that beautiful contrast. It's all yeah. about contrast. You're right. And Shane Black did a really good job with it with this film. He, right. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's a great. Yeah. It might be the best buddy movie of the year. <laughs> Um, I think so. Yeah. And, you know, it's funny that you say campy because it has that set, 70s situation setting. And you, we've seen so many detective cops seven, in set in the 70s. Uh -huh. Some of them actually filmed in the 70s. But they have these tropes that they play over and over again that you expect. And while there are some of those tropes in it, I think they do a really good job at putting – they don't feel like um, overplayed whenever they're in the movie. It feels almost like a fresh spin. And I don't know if you can say that's because of the like the amazing cast in it, or just the movie itself, or maybe a combination of both. But I feel like if you know one of them had a um, a monkey partner for a while, or some you know very What's basic. What's up with you the obsession with monkeys and partners, dude? What's I think that's I think that's like the the official like the worst way, of the worst. Right? Which way you can, or any way, or any You know what I'm saying? Then yeah, you're, you're finishing your, your my point for me. Like, I know exactly what you're saying, and let me add to your point by saying this. I agree. I feel like there's three legs to that tripod. And you're right. The actors were great. The movie was written very well. But the third thing that makes it not so generic seeming is it's been a while, at least in my opinion, since we've had one of these like Starsky and Hutch type movies. Yeah, yeah. You know, okay. We've been due. And yeah. so you and think, this one, and this one didn't disappoint. A big part of this is just kind of bringing back something we haven't seen in a while. Exactly, and it, it, it causes that. that kind of nostalgia. All right. I, I do. I, I do feel a nostalgia with the movie. So. I mean, you, you enjoyed it, though, so all around. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm totally defending your point. I feel nostalgia for movies all the time, especially when they bring up something that reminds me of a younger period, you know? And yeah. that is something that this movie did very well. Maybe that's why they kept it lighthearted, because when you get nostalgic, you're more susceptible. Yeah. And they did a good job. It was, it was profound, but not too profound. It had a good balance in it. I mean, it it's lighthearted, but not completely. And the trailer... 
The trailer is great because it, it makes you think it's going to be just one way throughout the whole film. And that's not the case at all. <laughs> I uh, yeah, I got to say. Not at all. The, the trailer, like, <laughs> it was good. It made me want to see the movie. It made me very excited about the movie. Right. It, it did its job. Just the poster but, made me want to see it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I hear you. But, yeah, I mean, the, the poster, the, the previews. But once you get there, you got more for a ride in store. And I it's good. More. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. I love when movies do that, actually. That's a very good point. Yeah, definitely. So the three of us definitely say that The Nice Guys is definitely something worth rewatching yeah, a few go times. Go watch it for sure. Definitely. Yeah, get it while you can. It's a yeah. great film. I will be buying that one. Definitely. Right. They didn't finish last this time. Yes, exactly. <laughs> oh, I like that. That's what's up. Okay. You liked it? I thought it was really lame. <laughs> oh, you're just hating, dude. You're a hater. I think you're I like, liked I, it too, but I think it was really <laughs> lame. It wasn't lame, dude. I like that. That's okay. <laughs> Don't. It can be a little lame. Uh, over here. I think I just winced involuntarily. That's okay. Sometimes lame is good. You know, well, lame is good. good. No, I, I think I, I'm a firm believer in lame is good. We know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. I can dig it. So, yeah, definitely. So, so the we're nice good. Guys. I mean, do you guys have any complaints with the movie? That's one thing I kind of want to close off because all we're doing is saying how great the movie is. Is there anything well, you didn't like? Well, huh, that's a good question. So when you ask me that, well, I guess my only complaint would be that when you watch that film, it's just like, you know, that. Hmm, how do I say this? So when you watch that film, I feel like some people could have been a lot smarter than what they were and what they were doing. So <laughs> you're talking character-wise. Yeah, yes, but it all—I mean, but it all worked out. I mean, it, it, it played itself out the way it was supposed to. It just there were some turns that I wasn't expecting that kind of threw me for a loop. But but I but I I went and I rolled with it. But I guess it goes back to um the disturbingly innocent darkness that was a part of that film. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Well, um, we, we're having to uh, go to commercial break right now. When we come back, though, me and Mariana are going to see if we can come up with any complaints. We're also going to go ahead and do our wrap-up with X-Men, Apocalypse, and The Nice Guys. So we'll see you guys very soon. See ya. Need your daily fix on mixed martial arts? We're going to kind of recap Bellator 155. From UFC 198. Who's who? Kind of a controversial decision. And who's not? I couldn't figure out why, and then they hit me. Well, don't you fret, because Golden State Media Concepts got, got you covered. covered. Get your daily dose of MMA podcasts. Everything from the UFC, the Bellator Fighting Championships, Extreme Cage Fighting, and Victor Fighting Championships, and, and, and so, so much, much more. more. Join us as we talk about some of the big Biggest names in mix martial arts. We've got you covered here on Golden State Media Concepts MMA Podcast. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Now, we know that our advertisements are awesome, so just try to listen in and bear with us, okay? Because <laughs> I I didn't think of a complaint for the nice guys, but I did think of a reason why, and I want your guys' input on this, okay? And we're speaking with Mariano. So. Correct. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's me. Now, the reason why I found it so hard to, to find something negative with the nice guys, I think, is because of what I said earlier. It's been so long. Since I've had one of these movies, I almost don't have much to base it off of. So it was just all around enjoyable. What do you guys think, though? Because I'm curious as to how you feel about that. I, yeah, after the break, I thought about it. I don't really have any complaints about it. Because even with the, with the scenes that threw me for a loop, it all made sense still. It all, it all added to the film. It all made it special right. to me. Yeah. So, yeah, it was just it, – it's, it's a nice breath, breath of fresh air. What do you think, though, Jordan? Because you brought it up, so that makes me think that you've got something to say about it. Well, honestly, you know – I, it kind of ties in with what I'm going to ask about X-Men. I'm going to ask the same okay. thing if you guys have any complaints with it. Me, I think that uh, I enjoyed it a lot. I really did. I do I do remember feeling like at, at some points where it was running on a bit to me. Like there was a couple slow parts to me. X-Men? Uh, no, not X-Men actually. I, the Nice Guys? The Nice Guys. Okay. Which, when I, when I think of the movie in retrospect, I can't think of a single moment I had a complaint with the entire movie. I remember enjoying it throughout. But there, I do also, you know, like remember checking the time, like mm -hmm. oh, this this scene's kind of running a bit. But I, as I as I say that, whenever you kind of I look into a retrospective of the movie itself, uh -huh. 
I actually I, I don't remember feeling a drag in it, but whenever I was watching it firsthand, it did feel a bit draggish. I know what you mean, and I think that the reason that it felt that way, it felt fine at the time, but you thought about it later, was because that drag added to the scene. Yeah, you're and right. that that kind of made it fun. Like Napoleon Dynamite, those scenes drag forever, but that. But it's great. Exactly, but it's great. <laughs> it's okay. great because that drag adds to like <laughs> the overall. Agree. It adds to the overall feeling of like just awkwardness of the whole yeah, movie. You know, definitely. So, I think so. I think that you're exactly right. So. I mean, it, it was kind of something like planting a seed and then enjoying it exactly. later. Exactly. You got me wanting to watch it again now, nice guy. So Let's I can think it. about let's, that. Let's just turn this off and watch it. Right I now. know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Cutting it short, guys. But, so. yeah, even though this is the summer of superhero films and science fiction, and we're excited about that this year, you know, definitely see the nice guys if you want a good comedy slash drama, uh, something that, to, to make you feel good and make you think, and, to, you know, and to help you, like, it even makes fun of itself to a, to a, to a degree. Mm -hmm. So all those things. So I definitely want to recommend seeing that film. Okay, yeah. Because it stands out because there's so many other films that aren't going to be like that film exactly. this summer, this year. I didn't think I'd say this, but I totally agree with everything you're saying right now, Keith. It's You're definitely right. And um, I, this kind of helps because we're, we're moving on. That's part of our wrap-up. Now I'm going to ask you guys the same thing about X-Men. Okay. Any complaints? Yes. You, you have, all right, we'll start Mariano. with Mariano, I guess. <laughs> Was that quick on the draw? Yeah. <laughs> I liked it. I just feel like Jean Grey overacted a little bit sometimes, and so did Scott's, their, their actors. Not The characters were fine, but they, they overacted a little sometimes, to me. Really? Yeah. Okay. So the characters themselves were great. The the actors, the Miss Sansa Stark. Right. I It just makes me wonder, like, why why them? They did a great job, but it just... It bothered me just the tiniest bit, you know. But since there's so little to complain about the rest of the movie, that's what really stood out to me. Okay, so there was just a few scenes of just kind of overreacting. Mm -hmm. what, what about you, Keith? I, mean, I didn't feel that way at all. I mean, I just I, I, I enjoyed it. I, I did. Okay. So it just it was just yeah. yeah. It, it, no complaints. I, I, I like that film more than I did Captain America: Civil War. It made up for that for me. <laughs> oh, I forgot you didn't like that. I like that movie. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, it made up for it. Like I said, it's my favorite X Men film. So uh, after watching that film in the theater, now now I'm very open to reading the X Men books. Huh. I've seen all the X Men movies. That one made me want to read the books now. So yeah, that's that, great. That, yeah. So that that really does speak miles about. Yeah, that really does. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I like the new cast. They're young and they're fresh, and it's it's a nice. It, yeah, it's going to be great. I, I like it. I like that relationship between Magneto and Professor Xavier. Yeah, it's so fun. it's so needed, and they're both so poignant in their beliefs. And there's a little bit of each other mm -hmm. in each other, and, and with their beliefs. Yep, I like that. I, I noticed exactly what you meant. And you see more of that in this one than in, in, in the past, I mm -hmm. think, mm -hmm. because they're younger and they're more, yeah. they're less guarded, and you you know you see it. Yes, and that's the thing that I was saying earlier. Uh, it goes into a couple things I was saying earlier. One thing is that. I didn't feel like they demonized um, Magneto this time, and it felt like every every kind of um, portrayal of Magneto, it's just he's this just he's a jerk, and you can still see him doing kind of bad things in this one, but he still had this kind of humanity in him that right. you don't really see in a lot of the other movies. I, 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 I didn't kind of, get that he was a jerk at all in this film. Not I didn't. No, I didn't think so. Well, he was doing things completely that completely justified that uh, old Magneto <laughs> could do. Older Magneto, you can see him doing those things. Yeah. But there was a bit more charm to it. There was a bit more you wanting to stay on his side. You can almost see his humanity slipping I, as things happen to him. And you yeah. kind of sympathize, you sympathize, sympathize with him as well, a result, I think. I wouldn't really call it charm or I, I, I take issue with that. Uh, it just – but like you said, I sympathize with him and I just – I just – I mean, I could I could sympathize and empathize with who he was and what was going on with him in his life. Yeah. But I've always had a soft spot for Magneto because I can always kind of relate to him. Like I said Me earlier, too. you know, I think when the writers created the X-Men, I think it was in the 60s, you know, they were thinking about what was going on in America with civil rights, you mm -hmm. know, because it's just really interesting when you think of Professor Xavier and Magneto and they're both leaders of the X-Men and their thoughts. Yeah. And, you know, they're different viewpoints that occasionally overlap. Or even just the overlying viewpoint, you know, humans against mutants. It's yeah, there's something to exactly. be said about that as well. Yes. And you know, for a story that it does seem like a bunch of misfits coming together and becoming something greater than you, what they are, you know, it felt this is the kind of movie that I'd want to see for that. The other X Men movies, they always felt kind of like they're all action heroes. They're all intense. They're all 
doing their amazing thing and they're too tough to die. And this one, there was so much huma- humanity, there was so much life, there was so much, you know, cute little jokes, a little bit of charm, like little dialogue that really showed you that they're not just this, you know, like super cool, overpowered man. Now it, that you phrase it that way, I totally agree. They they calibrated it very well. They did. It, it They actually did seem like people that could make mistakes but together are very strong it didn't it didn't feel like just wolverine being superman and professor professor xavier being batman it felt just a bunch of misfits coming together well and and you can see that they were trying to be very self-conscious of who they are and what they do Mm -hmm. and that they cared and that they didn't want any type of collateral damage yeah. Unlike in the other uh, other superhero films that we're having now, there's a new theme with that where now we're talking about collateral damage with human beings. That seems new territory mm-hmm. that, that the superhero universe is, you know, utilizing. And you didn't have to really worry about that with this film, which was cool. So. Yeah, no, definitely. And it's just uh, everything about it. I'm going to say that I have less to complain about with X-Men than I did with the nice guys because I didn't feel like anything dragged on. I loved it more than any other X-Men movie. And when I came out of it, now, I liked Captain America. That wasn't something I, I think I like it. Oh, but the whole world does but me, but that's okay. I But I liked X-Men more than I liked <laughs> Captain America. Right on. I really did. Okay, all right. Because it's, it's what I've been waiting yeah. to see in an X-Men movie. Me too. So Finally, yeah, not, everyone's, not everyone's trying to be Rambo. <laughs> it was my favorite X-Men, but I still prefer Captain America. It was a good movie. Oh, like I said, I get it. I understand. Yeah, yeah. Uh, th- that's totally understandable. But, I mean... But you have no complaints about it other than the overreacting. What nope. What did you guys think was better out of the two? What would you watch more? There you go again. I X-Men? Pit the two oh, come other. on now. It's it's apples and oranges, dude. X-Men are the nice guys. If someone apples can only afford oranges, bro. one movie apples ticket. Apples and oranges. Okay. It's all about what mood you're in. Well, oh, sorry, okay, Keith, the bank took away everything. You have no money left. All nope. you can afford is a movie ticket. Nope. This is happening. Don't worry. Not it's happening. still happening. You have one movie ticket, and it gets no. to, what are you going to do? Nope. What are you okay, about to say, Mariano? Well, if the bank takes all your money, I'd go see the nice guys because it's funnier and you'll be lighthearted. But yeah, okay. I Apples and oranges, yes, but I personally, tonight, will watch X-Men again. You'd watch X-Men? I'd yep. watch X-Men again, too. I'm going to go see it again tomorrow myself. Oh. But I'm going to go watch Nice Guys, too, probably next week. Okay. Probably on Tuesday, discount day. You know, there, we live in a world <laughs> with hypothetical situations, Keith. Wouldn't kill you to jump on the ball. Uh, no, you just like to pit. You're just an instigator. I'm not. Dude. I'm not. I'm just, you you're know. You're an instigator. But it's if, okay. If I'm seeing I still this, got love for you, man, but it's if, okay. <laughs> if I'm seeing this and I'm like, okay, which movie should I see? They both sound good. Well, what's your answer? My answer? X-Men. Okay. It'd be X-Men. Okay. Okay. All right. So we've got two go uh, two X Men's and one can't decide to save him's life. Oh, I can I, I, no, I just abstain. That's okay. You gotta yeah. you have to All appreciate right. that you know that different aspect. You know yeah. everything because yeah, it's apples and oranges. Exactly. He he respects the individuality. That's that's cool too. I would totally accept that as a response. Uh, yeah. Well, thank you, Mariano. Yeah, you're gonna fit in just fine here. <laughs> I, I, I can't and I won't. But um, but I'm on your side though. X Men for sure. Thank you. Okay. So, He's really good at making us both feel happy, right? Is that- <laughs> no, I'm just being honest. I'm not, you know. We could dig it. Yeah. yeah, it's all good. Don't if worry. this doesn't work out for you, I think you should be a hostage negotiator. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that was our show, though. I think we, we've wrapped it up. We did a great job. That I was think. a lot of fun. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. Yes. It was great talking with you, Mariano. Yeah, you guys yeah, too. Ma- yeah, yeah, likewise. Yeah, Mariano is a part of the new. He's, uh, he's a part of the new. Movie podcast family. So it's the Jordan Keith Mariano Mariano Keith Jordan show, and together podcast. we make a Rambo like uh, team. So I'm <laughs> yes. happy about this. Yes, Loki. with no first blood involved. But this is good. Yeah, well, thanks for being so inviting, guys. Go check out those movies. They are excellent. Yes, Definitely. I agree. And so, where can you? Well, first of all, thank you for tuning in, everyone who's listening. This is the Golden State Media Concepts movie podcast Mm -hmm. and you can like us on facebook follow us on twitter um let me see what else oh catch us on itunes google and you can also get us at gsmcpodcast.com so thanks again and you know as i would say see you somewhere out space but okay see you out there in space we were supposed to say at the same time (laughs) next time we'll get it you guys have a great day hi guys (laughs) you're a mess dude